All praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All praises to you, Heavenly Father, the holiest of holy. Aman. Shalom, Israel. I just wanted to bring this video um, to attention about, uh, I don't know if you guys know, because there's plenty of stories about Israelites being unjustly murdered across the United States and in the world. There's a lot that we don't hear about in you know, like the UK and stuff like that. But uh, George Stinney Jr. has, uh, it was a story I was never told. And a couple months ago, and for the past couple of weeks, I've been juggling around with this, with this, um, with this information and the understanding of this true story that happened to a 14 year old Israelite boy. Um, it's been messing with my heart. So I haven't posted it recently because I, my spirit just is hard to deal with. So I just want to give my fellow, you know, brothers and sisters in the truth under the most highest word that, uh, his scriptures are true and it, it doesn't come, it comes with warning, but the sadness and the sorrows that our people went through are true also. So they match up perfectly with the father's word. And, you know, we can't always blame our enemies. Like I do agree that they took it too far. And the father even says that they took it too far, but our forefathers messed up real bad. So I just want y'all to take a look at this video I know it's going to be hard to stomach, but if you think that what we've been through in the past unjustly, and then you look at what's supposed to come in the future when we actually are revealed who we really are, how much jealousy and anger do you think these other nations are going to have? Because they always had a perpetual hatred that the Most High speaks about against us. So I just want you to be vigilant and keep keep praying for the hedge of protection of the Most High on you. Keep praying to him for the hedge of protection on your family members, your sons, your daughters, your cousins. It doesn't matter, whoever you care for in this world. The only reason that I'm saying what I'm saying is because I want all of you to make it to the kingdom. I don't know where I'm going to be at. I just want to spread the word and the truth of the Most High. So, again, all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And let us pray that the Messiah will come before this world becomes too corrupt. But we know that the Father, Yahweh, is always on time. Amen. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young, nor shew favor to the young. March 23, 1944, in Alkaloo, South Carolina, these two white girls was riding bikes by the tracks that separate the whites and blacks. They was looking for Maypop flowers, but within hours they came up missing. Wishing that I had never told the sheriff that I had seen them, the white girl's bodies turned up the next day in a ditch not too far from where I stay. I was even part of the search to find them, but I found myself being blamed for the murder by Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. I began to panic as the white folks' rage raced at a pace too swift for me to even contemplate getting someplace safe. And before I could even count to five, I heard somebody say the nigger boy was the last one to see him alive. I wanted to run, but my feet couldn't move. So I couldn't run, and there was no point at this point because I was quickly surrounded by a white mob with guns. I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to be lynched that very instant, but in that same instant, the sheriff grabbed me and took me to jail. My name is George Jr. Stinney Jr., and I'm being arrested for the killing of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. The mob followed us all the way to the jail. Meanwhile, I'm crying for my life and wanted to see my mother because I wasn't guilty of nothing but being in the wrong place at the wrong time while being the wrong color. Small for my age, I was slightly built, but the interrogation proceedings began with a bunch of questions centered around the presumption of my guilt. You see, 
the good old boy reasoning wouldn't allow them to realize that at 5'1", 95 pounds, there was no way I could wrestle both girls to the ground, somehow manage to crush the skull of one while simultaneously subduing the other and transporting both bodies away from the scene in broad daylight without being seen. But the resolve of the sheriff could not be understated because he decided he was leaving that room with a confession even if he had to fabricate it. He offered me ice cream and said that I could go home and he'd forget it if I just admit that I did it. Now after hours of questioning with fear, exhaustion, and the naivete of my age combining to compromise my judgment, I admitted being the perpetrator of the incident and in that very instant relinquished my innocence. The sheriff left the room and I heard him say he just confessed that he was after sex. The little nigger boy just put the noose around his own neck. Best bet we get him to Charleston and out of sight. The lynch mob won't let the nigger survive the night. My name is George Junior Stinney Jr. And I'm being charged with the killing of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. The next morning I was sitting in my cell and I heard an officer tell another that my father had lost his job. And he and my family had left town the previous night in fear of their lives. I hadn't signed anything and no one talked to me about an attorney, but the jury selection began at 10, ended around 12 for the trial itself to start at 2.30. I couldn't do no bargaining and I wasn't in a position to, and that's probably how my defense attorney ended up being the county tax commissioner. Now, blacks were not allowed in the courtroom, so you know there were none on the jury. Quick, fast, and in a hurry with no witnesses, transcripts, written confession, or evidence. After 10 minutes, I was sentenced to death with no hesitance. My name is George Junior Stinney Jr., and I have just been convicted of the double homicide of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. By the time June 16th came, I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to die and convinced myself that I was not going to give them white folks the satisfaction of seeing me cry. Of this crime, I'm innocent. I done said it from the beginning and my contention is not diminished one bit by your bigoted justice system or a death sentence from an all-white jury that deliberated my innocence for a whole of 10 minutes. I grabbed my Bible and the guards walked me down the hall. A door at the end of the hall is all I saw. I walked in the room and handed the attendant my Bible and took a seat. But I was so small, the straps kept falling off and sliding down around my feet. The attendant looked at me and froze. I was too short to reach the face mask and electrodes. He took a second look and sat me on top of a stack of books. He stretched the electrodes to the limit to reach my head and cover my face with the mask is what he did. All of which was still too big. Then he pulled the switch. My body convulsed and twitched so much that my head came from under the bonnet, exposing my smoking nasal cavity and sizzling vomit. After four minutes, he turned off the power and my head lay tilted, with a sunken face, singed hair, and an eye missing. I'm sharing this with you so I'm not forgotten and the justice system is held accountable and in shame. Even though I may be long gone, don't give up trying to clear my name. My name is George Junior Stinney Jr., and I was executed for the double homicide of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. And to this day, at 14, the youngest ever to be executed in the United States. A voice of the howling of the shepherds for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of young lions for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus saith the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that... Ten minutes to convict them. And then he was led uh, to death row in uh, Clarendon County, South Carolina. We actually have a picture of him being led to death row. Uh, let me show you that. Uh, he was carrying a Bible. By the way, just if you're not absolutely clear yet uh, that he didn't do it, uh, historian in 2004 took this case on and uh, investigated it further and found out that there was a wealthy white family in the area who said that the real culprit did a deathbed confession and said that he had killed the two young girls. And a wealthy white family in the area who said that the real culprit did a deathbed confession and said that he had killed the two young girls. A wealthy white family in the area who said that the real culprit did a deathbed confession and said that he had killed the two young girls. And a member of that family was part of the process that picked Stinney as the real culprit. It's impossible to know now, looking back 70 years, who knew and didn't know what exactly happened. Really, they were sure that this 14-year-old had done it, this 90-pound 14-year-old. Did they care that someone else had done it and was going to get away with the murders? 
They didn't care. They strapped him into Old Sparky. That's literally what the electric chair in South Carolina was called. And then, just as the story is horrible, it's about to get worse. Since he was so young, uh, they couldn't strap him in right. They took the Bible he was carrying and made him use it as a booster seat. About to get worse. Since he was so young, uh, they couldn't strap him in right. They took the Bible he was carrying and made him use it as a booster seat. And then George Enright, they took the Bible he was carrying and made him use it as a booster seat whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Israel, if that's not painful for you to watch, and I know because we are spiritual people, that that hurts, and that could have been, you know, any one of our family members at any second till this day, it still goes down like that in the judicial system. Um, <laughs> like I said before, this video is not easy for me to post, but, you know, you know, just like we do with the scriptures, we look at our past so we can correct ourselves and we can see what's to come so that we can ask Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah for the hedge of protection that he provides over us when we follow his law, statutes, and commandments. And it's important, especially in this hour, because like I said before, the jealousy that is to come upon our people when we are revealed as the children of the book because everybody's walking around like they don't know or they don't want to know or they just in complete denial. But, you know, it's going to be confirmed. It's going to be confirmed. And the hatred that they have for us, even for simple things like George Stinney Jr. was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Innocent, 14 years old. They sat him on his Bible that he was reading while he was in while he was in the prison cell to execute him. I'm not trying to put fear in your hearts, Israel. I'm not. I'm just saying, look at how these devils work. Pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to the people that you're involved with because these devils have no regard for a so-called Negro life. They never have, and they never will. And they tell us to pull us ourselves up by our bootstraps after everything that they've done, including the Willie Lynch letters, slavery, um, all those things that, like, telling, lying about who we actually are, telling us that we're nothing, still counting us in 2019 as uh, less than a human being when they're actually the ones that are less than a human being. So I just... I just wanted to share this with y'all. And, you know, I love y'all very much. Just stay vigilant and and cling to Yahweh. Cling to Yahweh. Because a lot of this, a lot of this truth is coming out now. And, you know, just like the scriptures say, why do the heathen rage? They don't like being uncomfortable knowing that we're the chosen children of the Most High. And recompense is upon their head. They don't like that. They do not like it. We see it everywhere. They don't like it. They don't want to hear it. All of a sudden, like, oh, God loves everybody. Well, what? What? when did that start? But I'm not going to go into a full rant because y'all know I can go on and on. But all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Kwam Yasharala. I love y'all. I love y'all. Stay vigilant. Cling to Yahweh. This is the hour to do so. Amen. And Israel, please can continue to pray, you know, for yourself and your loved ones to wake up at this hour. Um, and let's look forward to, you know, the positive things that our father is not mocked, that his word is true. And if we stay, if we stick with him and rock with him the way he's been rocking with us, We'll all make it to the kingdom one day. And we'll be able to look at this, but we have to be reminded of this pain, of this punishment that the Most High put us under. But I want to end this video on a positive note. I love y'all, Israel. I really do.
I love my people. I love my nation. So, again, like I will always say, I'll never stop saying it. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. All honor and glory goes to you, Heavenly Father. I can't wait for that fateful day when the Messiah, Yahweh Shah, comes back to reign on this earth in the new kingdom. And I pray that I count myself worthy. And I hope that my brothers and sisters do too. I'm on. So we get back to Jerusalem. My brothers and my sisters. We are the Jews, part of the lost tribes of Israel. We're going back to the land where we fell. It's gonna be a beautiful place. A beautiful place. With maids and servants all around. Can't wait to return to our land. We're part of the lost tribes, and now we've been found. found. Someday we're gonna return.